Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to break down and dissect the drug that P. Diddy gave to his victims so that he could take advantage of them. Rodney Jones, known as Little Rod, stated in his lawsuit against Diddy that during his infamous parties, Sean Combs would lace the bottles of liquor with a compound known as 2C or pink cocaine or 2CB. To be clear, 2CB is not to be confused with Shulgin's original psychedelic creation called 2CB. Oh no, 2C, often spelled T-U-C-C-I or T-U-C-I, is actually a conglomeration of a bunch of compounds all smushed together and then doused in some pretty pink food coloring. So just what is 2C? The scariest part is 2C isn't even always made the same way. The cast of characters diabolically tossed together can change at freaking random. Sometimes it might be MDMA mixed with some ketamine, mixed with a random opioid with a sprinkle of acid on top. Other times you might get meth, ketamine, and fentanyl. Or maybe it's molly, cocaine, ketamina, and GHB. The ingredients are always shifting, but two things are always going to stay the same. One, she's always going to be pink. And she's always going to be disturbingly dangerous. And I'm going to explain why. I'll tell you why, because the mushrooms told me. They told me that as long as you buy one of my psychedelic trip blankets, you will never have a bad trip again. That's right, the mushrooms told me that if you head to psychsubstance.shop and pick up one of our psychedelic trip mushroom onesies or blankets, you will never have a bad trip again. Pick one of these up for yourself at psychsubstance.shop. They are on sale now. Now back to the main program. You can't just drop it. <laughs> it cuts. <laughs> Why was I hitting it so hard? You gotta understand that when you take multiple substances at once, the body doesn't exactly see it as each knee, son, she. It actually sees it as one big concoction of substances mixed together, hitting you like it's one brand new drug. Sometimes quite actually. For instance, when you mix cocaine with alcohol, you get cocaethylene. Sometimes the body actually combines the substance. You see, our bodies are master chemists. That's right. We all got a little bit of Walter White in us. And this can be really dangerous, especially when you have substances that have very contrasting effects. For example, when you mix a depressant, which lowers your blood pressure, and a stimulant, which raises your blood pressure, these are two very contrasting effects, and your body is getting a very mixed signal, which is often why people die from consuming things like a speedball. Our hearts cannot slow down and speed up at the same time. That would be like driving your car fast and slow simul frickentaneously. I mean, the math is just not mathing. Ain't gonna work, dog. It's also extremely dangerous just to mix two stimulants together. 2C concoctions containing both molly and coke, or maybe molly and some random novel stimulant, are gonna put double strain on your heart. Then you add fentanyl into the mix, and you've got something even more dangerous than a speedball ever could dream of being. And let's not forget that most people are gonna be adding yet another substance to the mix. They're gonna be mixing it with good old ethanol. And this adds several more layers of danger. It is known to never mix GHB with alcohol. This can cause respiratory depression and death. It is also known never to mix an opioid with alcohol. This can cause respiratory depression and death. Now consider the concoctions of 2C, which contain both GHB, an opioid, and now these guys are drinking alcohol. Holy shit, that's a triple whammy. It's gonna cause respiratory depression, and you named it death, as well as the stimulant that's added, which is gonna speed the heart rate up. This concoction is freaking dangerous, dude. What you're gonna get is a combo of substances that make somebody extremely susceptible to, I don't know, manipulation? Somebody that's easy to influence? Because we all know we're really easy to take advantage of when we're past the fuck out. Let's also keep in mind that most users, actually all users, are gonna have absolutely no idea how much of each substance is added. You know, they're not gonna know the ratio of how much of this is molly to ketamine. You're not gonna know the ratio because you didn't make it. There's no way to know unless you send it to a freaking lab. Safe Drug Use 101 dictates one must always know their dose. And this is why it would be safer, not safe, but safer to consume all of these substances individually if you wanted to do this. I mean, it could still kill you, but at least you'd be in control of precisely how much of each compound was going in to your death mix. You would also be able to test your compounds with a reagent testing kit to ensure that they were safe and they potentially didn't kill you, at least individually. Again, safe substance use 101 means you always test every substance before you ingest it with a testing kit to ensure it's not cut with something dangerous. You can find a link below what I think is the best company that offers these testing kits. I don't advise anybody consumes anything, but if you are going to consume 
consume something, you gotta test it before you ingest it. Please follow the link below and pick one up for yourself today if you don't already have a testing kit. And to be clear, you could never use a testing kit on Tusi because it's already cut with a bazillion things. It's just gonna give you a haywire results. They can only test one substance at a time. And the whole point is to test if it is A, what you think it is, and then B, if it's cut with something. If you had Tusi, you would actually have to send it to a lab, or if you're at a festival, you get it tested, because uh, things like Shambhala have mass spectrometers that they can test their substances with. But ain't none of us druggies got time for that shit, do we? <laughs> This is the part of the video where I personally usually test the substance in real time to give you guys feedback as to what the effects are actually like, at least on me. However, you could not pay me enough money to put this potentially dangerous substance into my body. But we can imagine, especially when combined with alcohol, which nearly everyone's going to be doing, that this substance is going to make a person very easy to manipulate and control. It's gonna make people do shit that they normally wouldn't do. I mean, Molly on its own is gonna make somebody much more easy to influence. Then you add the dissociating effects of ketamine, which can make one feel like they're launched outside of their body. Next, G-Baby, that's gonna make you feel all floaty. So you're already out of your body. Now you're extra floaty. You're easy to influence. You can just imagine the ideas that people are going to go along with that they normally would just be like, nah, dog, fuck off. We haven't even touched on what the opioid mix is gonna make you feel like. You're just gonna be feeling real good all over. So yeah, yeah. Safe to say this stuff is gonna really F you up. Am I gonna try it? No freaking thank you. Not a chance this side of hell. Anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope, if anything, you can see uh, why, you know, in, in this case that uh, I hate seeing stuff like this come out. But you can at least maybe now have some kind of an understanding of exactly what it was that these people were taking in the sense that you're never going to know exactly what was in it. An MDMA ketamine mix of something. So if you want to really quell your curiosity, just take MDMA and ketamine together, which actually those two aren't going to be that dangerous. It's never safe. Well, it's usually not safe to combine compounds. You can find charts online that will tell you precisely which ones are safe to combine or not. Shockingly, a lot of compounds are safe on their own, but the second you mix it with something else is when it becomes dangerous, and that's the moment that most people start overdosing. So I'm not advising anybody mix anything, but uh, from my knowledge, I think ketamine and M are generally safe for most people to mix. It's once they start adding in these other things that I've already explained in the video, I don't wanna be redundant and go over it again, uh, that it becomes dangerous. And I can definitely see why people would be easy to manipulate and why they do things they wouldn't want to do when they're just so effed up they don't even know which way up is. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. We haven't been uploading for a while, so a lot of our subscribers aren't getting notified of videos. So if, even if you are subscribed, please hit that bell to make sure that you're notified of a new video. We're going to be uploading a lot. And a huge thank you to all my patrons. You guys make this shit possible. If you want to see the uncut version of these videos, head on over to our Patreon page. Most videos that I post, like I'd say over over 90% of them have the YouTube safe version and then the Patreon version. And this is just because there's a lot of stuff that we just can't show on YouTube. I really appreciate everyone that does sign up to Patreon because you're making this shit happen. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it with a big thumbs up and I can't wait to see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.